These fire tests have been commissioned by IFPNC Insurance to investigate the performance of different sandwich panel insulation materials when subjected to the type of damage observed during surveys of industrial premises. Four tests are being carried out on rooms built using sandwich panels supported on a steel frame. In two of the rooms, PIR sandwich panels were used while panels insulated with stone wool were used for the remaining two rooms. The fire load in the first two tests was provided only by a propane burner. For more information, refer to the article in IF's Risk Consulting magazine. The test starts with ignition of the propane burner. The initial heat release rate is 100 kilowatts. This is equivalent to a fire in a waste paper basket. The clock at the bottom left shows the time since ignition. The PIR room is seen to the left and the stone wall room to the right. The damage to the panels includes three holes to the back wall and a cable tray across the room sealed with expanded plastic foam to the left and a putty sealant to the right. Screw holes are also visible in the top left corner of the screen. After five minutes, the temperature in both rooms is approximately 150 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes, the burner heat release rate is increased to 300 kilowatts. This is equivalent to a fire in a small sofa. Almost immediately, the expanded plastic foam used as a sealant to the cable tray ignites. The coating on the steel facing in the PIR room begins to flake off. Smoke at the ceiling of the PIR room can be clearly seen. A strong movement of air towards the fire is indicated by the movement of dust on the floor in the PIR room. Shortly after the heat release rate is increased, the temperature in the PIR room rises quickly from 150 to 950 degrees Celsius. Flashover occurs at approximately 600 degrees Celsius, with the few combustible materials in the room being ignited by the radiated heat. Flames can be seen jetting out of the screw holes in the top left corner of the screen. The insulation has also ignited in the holes at the back wall. The housing to the camera ignites due to the heat in the room. Twelve and a half minutes into the test, the temperature in the stone wall room has reached 300 degrees Celsius. Creases in the panel suggest delamination in the area closest to the burner. The foam sealant in the cable tray continues to burn. Flames can be seen not only from the holes in the back wall, but also from seams and from the roof. Smoke from the insulation material breaking down under the heat of the fire is escaping through the seams, seen as the yellow smoke to the right. 20 minutes into the test, the burner heat release rate is increased from 300 to 600 kilowatts. There are no signs of integrity failure at this point, which would otherwise be obvious in the darkness. Inside the stone wool room, the temperature has reached 550 degrees Celsius. Some flames from the panel joints can be seen. This is probably due to delamination of the metal faces ignition of the exposed glue. Again, the movement of air across the floor suggests an intense fire in the room. The appearance of flames at the screw holes are further evidence of the effect of glue being exposed and ignited. Three minutes after the burner heat release rate was increased to 600 kilowatts, the burner in the PIR room is turned off. Twenty minutes after the burner heat release rate was increased to 600 kilowatts, the burner is turned off. The fire does not continue to burn in the stone wall panel room. The steel frame is glowing after being exposed to a temperature of approximately 600 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. The fire load in the second set of two tests has been increased. A wooden crib has been placed in the room in addition to the propane burner. 
The test setup is similar to the first two tests, but the damage to the room does not include the three holes in the back wall. The wooden crib is placed centrally in the room and protected from the direct heat of the burner by a plasterboard shield. Five minutes into the test, the temperature in both rooms is approximately 150 degrees Celsius, the same as for the first two tests. After 10 minutes, the burner heat release rate is increased to 300 kilowatts. Again, we see burning flakes of the coating in the PAR room and a buildup of smoke at the ceiling. After 11 minutes, the temperature in the PR room is approximately 500 degrees Celsius and rapidly increasing. The wooden crib has not yet been ignited, but there is significant smoke in the room. The temperature in the stonewall room is approximately 280 degrees Celsius, and flames at the ceiling from the burner are not obscured by smoke. Flashover occurs in the PIR room after approximately 11 and a half minutes. The top layer of the wood crib ignites. 12 minutes into the test, the temperature is approximately 850 degrees Celsius in the PIR room. The burner is turned off and the fire allowed to propagate down through the wooden crib, reaching the bottom layer two minutes after flashover. After 18 minutes, the temperature in the PIR room has reached in excess of 1000 degrees Celsius. The thermocouples begin to fail and the room temperature measurements are less reliable hereafter. After 21 minutes, a panel seam fails with flames appearing through the side wall of the PIR room. The test is extinguished after 42 minutes. Two and a half minutes after the burner heat release rate was turned up to 600 kilowatts, flashover occurs in the stone wall room, again indicated by ignition of the top layer of the crib. 23 minutes into the test, the temperature in the room has reached approximately 800 degrees Celsius, and the fire is allowed to propagate down through the wooden crib, and the burner is still ignited. After 25 minutes, the burner is turned off. The temperature in the room drops to approximately 630 degrees Celsius. The fire reaches the bottom layer of the wooden crib approximately 12 minutes after flashover. After 42 minutes, the temperature in the stonewall room has increased to approximately 800 degrees Celsius. The test is allowed to continue, reaching a peak temperature of 900 degrees Celsius after 50 minutes. The test is extinguished after 64 minutes. For more information, please refer to the article in IFS Risk Consulting Magazine, which can be found by following the link on the screen.